Today is probably the last time I'd be able to screen print at my university's workshop. This has always been my favorite thing to do during studies and I'd like to show you the process. Screens have these tiny pores and the first thing you do is to cover the whole screen with this pink paste that is sensitive to UV light. All of this is done in a black room. That's where the magic happens. Then you can decide on the motif you'd like to print. It needs to be printed out or painted in black on transparent paper and you'd place it on the screen in this huge vacuum machine and it will be exposed to UV lights for a bit depending on the pattern but usually around 40 seconds. So for the pattern I chose and I know some of you might relate my hairpins and bobby pins are constantly all over the place. One day I looked at my bed and there they were, lying around on a blouse, giggling. And I thought this might be a very lovely pattern actually. There is something very delicate about this motif because I already had some experience with screen printing. I knew that by printing with foil I'd be even able to create a trompeau effect. Now this weird looking word combination stands for deception of the eye, a practice that was very often used by painters and architects to create an illusion of something that isn't there really, to trick the eye that the archway actually leads to Arcadia, ceilings with illusion skies full of mythical beings, paintings that look like objects hanging on a wall and sculptures that are skillfully veiled in marble. <laughs> Cue Pride and Prejudice. It is also a term that is used in fashion a lot. Martin Margella's work is very often associated with this technique. His designs are generally very playful and I think in his Spring Summer 96 collection he printed photos of clothes on different clothes. In a way, although not quite right, in fashion you can basically call anything a trompe when it looks like something that it is not so the meaning is slightly broader. To me though, this print reminds me of the work of Elsa Schiaparelli, definitely one of my favorite designers. There was an exhibition actually recently in Paris showcasing her work. I wasn't able to go unfortunately, but if you did, I envy you so much. However, I got my hands on the book for that exhibition, which just makes me so happy. It's called Shocking. She is famous for popularizing this specific hue of pink, which she called shocking pink. She came to Paris from Italy and became successful in the 1930s by launching these sweaters with a trompeux bow knitted on it, which became an it item very quickly. And her work was very playful, ironic and sweet. The skeleton dress is very iconic. This shoe hat. Look at all these playful embroidery details. And she was actually the one to introduce this perfume bottle in the shape of a torso. It was actually modeled after the exact measurements of Mae West's famous figure. She was one of the first to successfully collaborate with artists as well. And I think one would mostly categorize her work as surrealist. Yes, she was called the surrealist designer. For some though, her work was too shocking too vulgar. Her very famous rival Coco Chanel, she actually called her that Italian woman, which we love a queen with an already established name who puts other emerging successful women down and was an actual Nazi. <sighs> anyway, the House of Schiaparelli was very successfully revived recently under the reigns of the American designer Daniel Rosebery. I think his designs are a bit more Ostia maybe, and I think he's mostly inspired by the golden embroidery and such, translating it into modern silhouettes, at least as far as I can tell from his recent collections. But to me, Schiaparelli was a genius designer, and I don't use this word lightly. She was a marketing genius, and I think people in fashion are still coming back to steal little tiny bits of her ideas. And I guess I'm one of those people because this print really reminds me of her. 
So once the lighting has done its magic, you can take your screen and you'd need to wash away all the parts that have been blocked by the lighting. You do that by using a high pressure cleaner and now you can print your motif through those open pores of the screen. There are so many different options as to what you'll actually use to print. There are organic colors, colors that sit on top of the textile, colors that integrate into the material, glue and foam. Printing with foam is actually so much fun. I used to do that a lot for my projects. If you steam it or apply heat to it, it foams up and can create beautiful three-dimensional relief-like effects on the fabric. And my favorite part about it is on the reverse, it creates this almost embossed-like character, which I love. Anyway, I'm going to print with adhesive today. Now, first you'd need to secure your fabric with some needles to the table. With a pattern that is supposed to be concentrated like mine, it would make much more sense to print directly onto finished pattern pieces. But I'm not just there yet and, you know, sometimes it is also nice to let the fabric decide what your garment is going to look like. Then you place your screen on top of it with some weights so it won't move. Add the printing paste of your choice and then press it into the fabric with a squeegee blade. And you need to go at least twice back and forth to coat the fibers from both sides. Then you can wash away the residue and let it dry for another go. Once the adhesive has dried, which took roughly 20 minutes I'd say, I can basically glue anything I'd want to on it. There is flock, something I used to experiment with quite often, pigments, glitter, and I'm going to use this gold foil to achieve my trompeur effect. I am putting it into the ironing press for a few seconds with the foil on top of it. That is probably the most satisfying part. This is what my fabric looks like finished, but I also just barely scratched the surface of all the things one can do. And let me know if you have any ideas for what I can actually use this for. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.